सुभद्रा महारानी के श्री श्री गौ निताई की श्री लभ्रूपाद की समावेत भक्त वृंद की श्री वृंदावन धाम की ओम ज्ञान निरंद से ज्ञान श्री चैतन्य मनोवीतम स्थापित भूतले स्वयं रूप सदाम ददाती स्वदाक वंदे श्री गुरो सावदूत पर्जना सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य श्री राधा कृष्ण पदगणलिता श्री विशाखान्विता नमा ओम विष्णुपादा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देशधारिणे नमो महावदन्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदायते कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नाम गौरत्षे नम हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधो दीन बंधो जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमस्तुते तत्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाछा कल्पतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर ये नष्ट प्राएश्वद्रेशु 
ಭಾಗವತ ಸೇವೆಯ ಭಗವತ್ಯುತ್ತಮ ಶ್ಲೋಕೆ ಭಕ್ತಿರ್ಭವತಿ ನೈಷ್ಠಿಕಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ದೇವಕೀ ನಂದನಾಯ ನಂದಗೋಪಕುಮಾರ ಗೋವಿಂದ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಫಾರ್ ದ ಬೃಂದಾವನ ಯಾತ್ರ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಎವರಿಗೈನಾ ರೇಡಿಯೋ ಎಫ್ ಎಂ ರೇಡಿಯೋ ಕಾವಾಲಂಟೆ ಅಕ್ಕಡೆ ಟೇಬಲ್ ಮೀದ ಅಮ್ಮತನಾರು ತೆಲುಗುಲೋ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಎವರಿಗೈತೆ ಎಫ್ ಎಂ ರೇಡಿಯೋ ಕಾವಾಲೋ ಅಕ್ಕಡೆ ಟೇಬಲ್ ಮೀದ ಅಮ್ಮತನಾರು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತೇ ನಂಬರ್ ಇಕ್ಕೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತೇ ನೋ ದಟ್ ರೇಡಿಯೋ ಸೆಟ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ಇಫ್ ಎನಿಬಡಿ ಡಸಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಫ್ರೀಕ್ವೆನ್ಸೀಸ್ 8.3 ಫ್ರೀಕ್ವೆನ್ಸಿ 88.3 ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ how many of you are coming to vrindavan yatra for the first time oh good number very good thank you first of all we want to offer our humble obeisances at the lotus feet of our spiritual master uh, and also shila prabhu pad by whose mercy we are given entrance into this holy abode of vrindavan <coughs> according to scriptures one should not go to a holy place only for sight seeing uh, and for a change or for just roaming around and coming back but one should go to a holy place uh, for hearing about the past times of the lord and the valuable instructions and teachings from saintly persons there is one song shuddha bhakta charana reno and that song ಭಕ್ತಿವನ್ನು ಠಾಕೂರ್ ಸೇಸ್ ಗೌರ ಅಮರ ಸೇಸ ಬಸ್ತಾನ ಕೊರಲು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣ ರಂಗೆ ಸೇಸ ಬಸ್ತಾನ ಹೇರಿಬೋ ಆಮಿ ಪ್ರಣಯ ಭಕತ ಸಂಗೆ ಶುದ್ಧ ಭಕತ ಚರಣ ರೇಣು ಭಜನ ಅನುಕೂಲ ಭಕತ ಸೇವಾ ಪರಮ ಸಿದ್ಧಿ ಪ್ರೇಮಲತಿ ಕಾರ ಮೂಲ ಇಸೈಂಗ್ that gaura amar jesavasthane korela brahmana range i will go to all the holy places where lord chaitanya mahaprabhu has visited but i will not go alone i will go in the company of other devotees and also i will go in the company of saintly people who will show us those places and tell us the significant significance of those places and then visiting those places would make sense we will be able to appreciate the dam also in every holy abode of krishna or vishnu or ram you will find there will be a shiva temple also you will find why there is a shiva temple shiva is called as a dampal dam pal means he is a protector of the dam so anybody enters into the dam initially shiva does not give access to them he want to test you whether you have come to dam with a seva bhav or you have come to dam with a bhoga bhav what is your intention in coming to the spiritual abode so somebody is coming with a spiritual desire that i want to purify my heart i want to glorify the lord i want to advance in my spiritual life i want to take one further step in my spiritual life uh, let me go beyond this material world and go to the spiritual world some day and here let me gather some spiritual inspiration in the association of various devotees if that is the mood then lord shiva will uh, remove the covering from the dam and he will expose you to you know the realities of the spiritual abode which will be accessible to you uh, more and more and if shiva sees that the mentality is demanding or complaining or arguing or fighting or angry mood mm-hmm. non cooperating and struggling oneself and making others struggle then shiva will cover the dam with the covering mm-hmm. then what we will see 
we will see the pigs and the dogs and the monkeys and the nasty road and the dusty streets uh, and we may feel uh, uh, the yatra to be burdensome when if shiva covers our vision so just like in the altar also there is a door the door opens from outside or from inside the altar door it opens from inside who opens it now that altar door in any iskon temple who opens it pujari but pujari opens it on the inspiration of the lord huh? lord tells the pujari now you open the door then he opens and gives darshan to all of us isn't it similarly <clears throat> when we come to the holy abode the revelation of the spiritual truths is you know, is made possible by shiva and the spiritual master they will make us uh, get a vision of the holy abode so uh, many of you are coming for the first time to vrindavan yatra vrindavan is a very very sweet abode and very very special abode amongst all the abodes there is one verse in the nectar of instruction which uh, begins like this vaikuntha janito vara madhupuri and that's a verse it says that better than vaikuntha is uh, madhupuri or mathura hmm. it says and then it'll say in mathura the better than mathura is the vrindavan dham better than vrindavan is govardhan hmm. and better than govardhan is radha kund which is situated in the foot of govardhan which we will be visiting also hmm. in this way among the abodes different abodes in many vaikuntha planets we call amongst them the goloka is the topmost <clears throat> and there is a reason for that why we call it as the topmost because in vaikuntha the mood is one of very great reverence to lord vishnu similarly in the saket dham there is a great reverence to lord rama great respect whereas when you go to krishna's abode there is a great intimacy i i heard a interesting uh, lecture by his holiness gaur gobind swami maharaj he was making a comparison in that lecture based on the scriptures he said lord narsimha is extremely mighty and powerful he jumps out of a pillar and he breaks open the belly of hiranyakashipu and kills him on the spot so he said narsimha is very mighty he is very fearsome to look at he comes in a lion face and a human like body but he said although narsimha is very powerful he also produces fear in the devatas we develop fear when we see him we agree that he is very powerful all devatas were trembling when he appeared in this world so then he went to say that lord rama is powerful but very beautiful also he is not fearsome lord rama alone took a bow and arrow and killed 14000 rakshasas in janasthan where he killed kara and dushan huh? and 14000 soldiers one only one rama single handedly he did that but although lord rama is killing so many rakshasas you will when you look at ram is he has a very beautiful face uh, his three mothers used to call him as ramachandra hmm? Ra- ramachandra means oh rama whose face is as cooling as the full moon so they used to call him as ramachandra he had a very handsome form so nobody would become frightened by seeing ram rama is mighty but very beautiful at the same time he said rama may be beautiful but krishna is more merciful than ram krishna is powerful also he shows a vishrupa darshan you all know outside and inside his mouth he showed the whole universe in inside his mouth isn't it mother yashoda he is very powerful and he is also very beautiful but at the same time he is very merciful also why he is called very merciful i'll tell you one reason is lord rama only gave seva to the monkeys to build the setu banda huh? but he didn't give them any remuneration but krishna told them i only gave you seva in my uh, previous incarnation as ram <coughs> now i'll give you butter now huh? as a remuneration now you eat so he fed them lot of butter as yes, krishna so he's more merciful so in i mean uh, uh, remuneration giving leader you like 
or leader who gives only seva you like which one correct and somebody gives you butter huh? there was one manager in pune if you do a nice service he'll give you some mahaprasad immediately so everybody will cooperate i was wondering how everybody cooperates because he gives mahaprasad little bit <laughs> so krishna so i said krishna is giving like that also krishna is more merciful why when shurpanaka came lord rama saw that she is becoming envious of sita she was about to attack sita at that time rama told lakshman lakshman do the needful the lakshman cut her nose and ears right and drove her away she ran away and showing her ugly looking form later on in the next life the same kubja uh, the same pushumnaka became kubja in the next life she was again very ugly looking in the sense she had a hunch bag with a stick in the hand when krishna was entering mathura kubja with her hunch bag kubdi huh? she came with a stick in the hand shaking huh? and krishna looked at her and joked about her to his friends he said oh tall and beautiful looking young girl where are you going he asked she was not a young girl she was a old woman she was not tall she was short she was not beautiful she was ugly still krishna joked about her like that and uh, actually our one of the acharya says it's not wrong at the part of krishna to joke about her because very soon she is going to he is going to make her beautiful <laughs> and young you know, and good looking so she said i'm i'm taking chandan for kamsa daily i take this so krishna said if you apply this chandan to me and balaram uh, on our forehead then your life will become fortunate he said and kubja immediately without hesitation she took the chandan and applied it to krishna and balram you can imagine how dangerous situation it is comes as henchmen comes as spies were always watching huh? any spy can go and tell kamsa that this is what she did and kamsa will arrange someone to cut off her head hmm? although there was a risk she took the risk and served krishna therefore krishna says ma shucha he says where does he say that sarva dharman parityajya ியூட்டிஃபுல் <laughs> Uh, one acharya says that rama rejected shurpanaka but krishna accepted her in the form of kubja so he is more merciful he says he didn't reject and when lord rama went to dandakaranya forest at that time there were a lot of saintly people there sages and rishis and munis living there and they were all sitting and meditating when they saw rama everybody got up and they all went to meet rama and offer obeisances and everything so they saw mother sita cooking nice some prasad and offering to ram so they developed a great attraction for that they thought that just like sita is serving ram we also want to become females like a consort of the lord and we also want to serve proper says in one place the female's body is made to very naturally serve the children the husband and the parents and the elders and everybody a woman has a natural propensity to serve and propa said it one time in the flight also one air hostess came and told propa swami ji what will you take veg or non veg she asked propa said nothing no. i am carrying prasad with me then she again came back and asked no is it all right if i give you some papaya huh? papaya fruit propa said okay you bring it so she cut and brought some papaya fruits and then propa said just see she wants to serve huh? she has a natural propensity to serve although i said i don't want anything still she want to serve something you know? he said so when the sages saw sita mata seva bhav they also wanted to become like her and lord ram knew very well the sages can change their form at will huh? suddenly imagine if all the sages became matajis huh? and they said to ram we all want to marry you can ram marry why he cannot marry ha ah, ye taken ek patni brat ram lord ram in advance only told them Oh sages don't expect me to marry any of you i already have a wife he said sita and i will not marry anyone else so they all became moros so we have no chance to serve ram then he told them when i come as krishna you all will become gopis at that time 
So, Chakravarti Thakur says that Krishna is more merciful than Ram. Ram refused to marry them, but Krishna accepted all of them, he says. Huh? All, all the gopis and danced with them, sang with them. So, they are called as Rishichari gopis or Munichari gopis, we call. Hmm? So, in this way, Lord Krishna is more accommodating, he says. He accepted all of them. Hmm? He fulfilled the desire and allowed them to take on the female forms of gopis and sang with them, danced with them and they were in ecstasy. Hmm? And uh, uh, also, you all know that when Krishna uh, killed uh, on Diwali day, just two days ago, uh, Krishna killed uh, Narakasura, Bahumasura, correct? No? And then opened the jail doors. And who was inside? Huh? 16,000 princesses from different parts of the world. Bahumasura had captured all of them and brought them and kept them in the jail for many years. Huh? So Krishna opened the jail and said, Oh, princesses, you all belong to different kings. Go back to your parents and live happily. Hmm? So none of them budged even an inch. They said, How can we go? They said, Nobody will marry us. We have been captured by this Asura and brought here. We have no scope to get settled in life. Probably we will remain like this all our life. There is no point going home, they said. Then Krishna asked, Then what do you want? They said, you only saved us. Why didn't you only marry us? And Krishna said, all right. He told all of them. And married all of them. And, and Prabhupada writes, sir, you will see in the Srimad Bhagavatam, when he married all of them, he gave them all saris, ornaments to wear, a very nice palanquin, and nice golden chariots. And he gave each of them on one palace in Dwaraka. And he expanded himself into 16,108 forms. And lived with each of them also as the king. And they are all his pure devotees. So the Prabhupada says, they were like a rejected lot, but Krishna gave them life. Therefore, Krishna is more merciful. Not only that, when he expanded himself, he saw that some of those princesses were short. So Krishna also expanded himself short also. Some of them are tall, he also became tall. Some of them a little chubby, he was also chubby. <laughs> He, like we say, made for each other. Huh? Like that Krishna expanded. And he married all of them. You can see that. So, uh, in this way, Krishna is more merciful than Ram. Ram says, no, no, only Ekapatni Vrat. But Krishna accommodated 16,108 queens. You can see that. Another reason why Krishna is more merciful, if you see Ram, Vishnu, they all stand like this. Like Vishnu standing with Shankar Chakra, Gada, Padma. Erect he stands. Correct, no? If you want... To access the chinhas. You know, chinha means symbols in the feet. How many of you have heard about the symbols in the feet of the Lord? You have heard? Oh, good number of you have heard. Okay. See, some of the incarnations have four symbols only. Some have eight. Some have twelve. Some have sixteen. Krishna has how many? Brahma says that in Padma Purana. Huh? Krishna has sixteen symbols. All sixteen symbols I saw in Krishna's lotus feet. Like that he says. I will tell you about two, three symbols. You will get an idea. What is the advantage of those symbols? Each of those symbols signifies something. There is a thunderbolt in Krishna's lotus feet. What is the purpose of that? Pranata Dehina Papakarshana Pranataranugam Sriniketanam Pani Panarpitam Tepadambujam Pranatucheshunaha Pradihrachayam Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama, Rama, Hare, Hare. 
the gopis are singing my dear krishna anyone who takes shelter of your lotus feet you will make the mountain of their sinful reactions into powder they are saying because the thunderbolt if you hit it on a mountain it makes it into powder so that is the power of the thunderbolt in your lotus feet there is one more symbol which is lotus lotus means if you become krishna's devotee you will be like a lotus which means lotus is surrounded by you know muddy pool of water even in the material world which has many nasty things going on you will be like a lotus unaffected by the material world that's the meaning of that there is another symbol there is umbrella hmm? umbrella is for what like above indra's head there is umbrella right umbrella is for respect even an average ordinary person can become highly respectable if he becomes krishna's devotee like in pune one devotee was telling me recently he became a counselor in pune so after my interview he said prabhu i have to reveal to you something uh, very personal about me and then he said i was born in a slum he said in pune and i have you know my my parents have cooked near the ditch and we lived in a chal you know chal chal means a very simple house with no doors also so he said there is be dogs going in coming out dirty ditch lot of mosquitoes and we had practically no jobs we were living in a uh, you know thatched the house with steel sheets and things like that that's how that's where i was born i was grown up in that family he said but i didn't get much education he said i did only fourth or fifth standard and parents had no money no. but he said one day i saw the harinam sankirtan going in the streets i ran to those devotees and i also followed them to the temple i took some book from them took some prasad and then he said then my life took a very big turn i started chanting hari krishna then i started sixteen rounds when i read proper books i understood what kind of life is this i am i leading uh, i got awake and then he said eventually uh, he went on to become a pandal uh, pandal making businessman huh? over a period of time and now now he says he has a house you know very close to the nvcc temple in near gaganonathi there's a place huh? he's got a big house he has got two three sisters and they have they have a very huge house and he said materially and spiritually i became very grown up uh, in my krishna consciousness now i cannot believe so many people respect me i don't deserve this respect he said huh? i am i come from a very very low class background he said but krishna now he is wearing a beautiful tilak yes kantimala he wears neat dress he goes in a very big posh car with his family members and he comes to temple and he is a very active organizer of a program huh? in one of the counselor groups and he himself is becoming counselor now how people grow in their life when you come to krishna consciousness huh? so you will you will see that in the same manner all of us we began this lifetime you know with so many defects but when you come to krishna consciousness you will completely become purified of all those things huh? you will become worshipable huh? there is one verse in the vishnu sahasranam sutram lokanam kirti vardhanam Uh, that is one of the loka uh, loka nam kirti vardhanam is used in the vishnu sasana which means lord expands the glories of his devotees uh, that for the umbrella is mentioned uh, a very degraded person can become very exalted person like that so like that many symbols are there uh, there is also one uh, flag you will find uh, sorry not flag i mean uh, fish uh, in krishna's lotus feet below the lotus feet what is the fish it has two two significances one significance is the fish cannot live without water similarly devotees cannot live without krishna krishna's lotus feet is their ashray huh? therefore the fish is in the lotus feet of the lord another meaning of the fish is in the madan you know madan kipit he has got a flag insignia which has got a fish in it so when one becomes krishna's devotee krishna knocks down the madan's flag and stands on that therefore he has a fish in the feet which means anyone who becomes a krishna's devotee can come out of the illusion of mad attraction for the opposite sex uh-huh. one can conquer the uh, illusions moha of this world that's the meaning of that so in this way krishna has many symbols rama also has vishnu also has but rama and vishnu they keep their feet like this therefore they are not considered as merciful as krishna who keeps his feet like this you see madan mohan how is he standing see how is madan mohan standing so what uh, shila vishnu chakra tagur says krishna is activating the 
16 symbols. Whereas Ram and Vishnu are keeping it in a dormant state. If you want that mercy, you have to go below their feet. Whereas for Krishna, he is activating it. Wherever you are, it will attack you. These 16 symbols. <laughs> they will protect you. So, you see, he is more merciful. By keeping his lotus feet like this. So, and also Krishna is more merciful for one more reason. You see, Lord Vishnu is always a master. All his servants, any problem they have, you just go to Vishnu and fall at his feet and say, Sir, please protect me. He will protect you. Just like Samudra Mantanila, the Devatas and Asuras could not lift the mountain. So Vishnu said, move aside. Then he took the mountain and kept it on the Garuda. And on both the wings of Garuda, he kept all Devatas and Asuras and carried them to the milk ocean. Yeah. If any problem, he is a problem solving leader. Who? Lord Vishnu. Then after reaching there, they put the Mandara Parva to do the churning. Yeah. But then uh, they didn't know, how will we churn? We don't have a rope. He said, don't worry, I will get Vasuki just now. So, he got the Vasuki as a snake, snake rope. Huh? So, he arranged for that also. Then when they tried to, you know, do the churning, they were doing this. But then the mountain would go like this, like this. Then Lord said, don't worry, I will become a tortoise below. Huh? He became, what do you call that avatar? Kurma avatar. Okay, now the base was very strong, powerful. But the problem the mountain was going like this. Then he sat at the top as another avatara called as Ajita avatar with ten hands. You will see that. So Vishnu expands uh, as Ajita. He expands as Kurma avatar. Huh? He provides facility. Any problem you have, you report to him and he can solve it. Later on, you will see that, you know, Dhanvantri brought that Kalash, Amrita Kalash. That is also Vishnu only. Huh? Then the demon snatched it and took away. Then again he expanded one more form. What is that? Mohani Murti. You will see that. So Vishnu is a problem solving leader. Uh, he is always a master. Whereas Ram, you will find he will be more, uh, what do you call it? Compared to Vishnu, Ram becomes more intimate with his followers. Uh, like for example, he can mix even with a Rakshasa's leader like Vibhishan. He can make friendship with even Sugriva, who is a Vanara's leader. No? He can make friendship even with the leader of boatmen. What's his name? Guha. No? You know, he, he comes down from this level to this level. It's called Saushileta, we call it. Hmm. But Krishna is considered even more intimate. Because Ram only makes connections with the leaders only. No? Because Vanara's leader is Sugriva. Raksha's leader is Vibhishan. He will not connect with people below the leader. Huh? Whereas Krishna will connect with even monkeys in Vrindavan, or peacocks, hmm. or birds, or deers, or cows, calves, hmm. anybody in Vrindavan. Everybody is connected to Krishna. Hmm. You will see that. So it's called Saushileta, we call it. You have great personality becoming intimate with a very little personality. Hmm. Then you feel very touched. Hmm. So, like imagine if your spiritual master comes to you and asks you, what's your name? You will feel touched. Oh, my Guru Maharaj asked me. Yeah. I am an ordinary person. Yeah. That he came or he gave me a flower yeah. or he gave me some prasad. Correct? No. Only once in a lifetime, if it happens to you, you will be touched. Do you agree? Hmm? Imagine Krishna is, there is not a single tree in Vrindavan which Krishna has not touched. Hmm? There is not a, a single cow or calf which Krishna has not attended at all. Huh? In fact, Krishna would play on his flute and call hmm? Chamari, Rangini, Dabali, Hansini, like that he would call the names of the cows. So the cows would come running, having you know, heard their names. Some cows would purposely hide behind the tree even after hearing the name. Do you know why? Because they would want Krishna to call them for the second time. <laughs> because they liked hearing the name of their own name from Krishna's mouth. So, therefore Krishna is considered most merciful because of connecting with even the very, very little living entities of Vrindavan. Therefore, this abode is Madhurya Dham, huh? the very, very sweet abode. It is. So, Krishna is not just a powerful Lord. Krishna is not just a beautiful Lord. But Krishna is also uh, a merciful Lord. And he is also very playful and sportive. 
and naughty and mischievous actually there is no difference between vishnu ram and krishna from tatva point of view lord chaitanya told this to venkata bata there is no difference if anybody says vishnu ram and krishna are different then he is a atheist like that mahaprabhu told venkata bata no? one should not differentiate between them and make arguments or criticisms foolishly all three are one person acting in triple forms triple acting the same lord nevertheless the difference is in rasa for example i can teach you mathematics by saying two mangoes plus three mangoes is five mangoes or i can say you know uh, two apples plus three apples is five apples what is the difference the count is same but the difference is the rasa so rasa in dealing with vishnu dealing with ram dealing with krishna that's where the difference lies they are same personality one person is acting in three roles so it's like the prime minister in the parliament and prime minister at home there's a mood the mood is a difference so vindavan is actually in that sense a very very sweet abode where to get entry into this abode to understand this type of subject matter is not very easy for us unless guru blesses us um, with his grace then this this kind of truths will become gradually evident to us understandable to us so the mood of entering the dham is depicted by one very great devotee called akrura you see when kamsa became very atrocious many many people fled out of mathura they didn't want to stay there one of them was rohini correct no she left and came to vrindavan and vasudev told her to stay with yashoda but there were others who did not flee away they stayed in mathura do you know why do you think they liked kamsa very much they wanted to see krishna's past times in mathura later on they knew very well one day krishna will come to kill kamsa that time we will get to see his beautiful past times so they were ready to wait there yeah. they were waiting there so one there was one minister whose name was akrura working with kamsa so that minister was called by kamsa and kamsa said look at this new golden chariot akrura i have purchased this for you but you have to do one very important work take this chariot and go to vrindavan and fetch those two boys to me bring those two fellows krishna balaram because these two fellows have been practically notorious indefeatable i have sent so many demons i sent putana you know, after the rise in chakatasura and then trinavarta you know, so many you know, demons agasur bakasur so many of them and every one of them only went to vindavan they never came back they were all finished that in vindavan i think because these two fellows are hiding behind the two behind the bushes of vrindavan they are able to kill these people let them come out of those bushes to my area huh, which is mathura and i am sure i will finish them he said so he told akrura what do you think can you go and fetch them see akrura is krishna's devotee do you think he would want to see krishna you know misandle like this so but akrura knew very well that kamsa won't be able to do what he is contemplating on kamsa was very very cruel personality so he was telling he said ugrasenam staviram he said ugrasena my father is a oldie he said and he said ugrasenam rajya kamukam he said that fellow wants he has a greed for the throne he wants to rule although he is a old fellow still he want to sit on the throne like that he criticized his own father who kamsa hmm? he said i i will finish him also he said huh? and then he said i'll finish krishna balram he said and then he said jarasandho mama guru he said jarasandha is my favorite guru why because his two daughters were married to me hasti and prapti so he respects me i respect him also i respect shishupal huh? i respect jarasandha so we say you know birds of the same feather flock together so kamsa was flocking with all the asuric mentality people like that so when akrura saw the new chariot he smiled then kamsa was also very happy that akrura is now you know smiling at the chariot that means he is happy with me but akrura smiled for a different reason do you know why he smiled he thought that this golden chariot 
is new and it will be offered to Krishna for the first time, like a bhoga offering. He never wanted to see a chariot which is used by Kamsa to be given to Krishna. Hmm? So, Akrura was very happy. I will go and offer it to Krishna. So, Akrura boarded his chariot and when he was coming to Vindavan, his mood is very exemplary. You can read that section. I think it is 10th canto, 38th chapter, I think. 38th chapter? 38th, no? Yeah, 38th chapter. Akrura entering Vindavan. Beautiful chapter. I don't have a projector to show today. Otherwise, I would have shown you. You can read it yourself. Mama ye tadurlavam manya uttama shloka darshanam is saying. Mama ye tadurlavam manya. I think he says that, you know, such darshan of Krishna is so rare for me, he said. I am such a, I mean, a person surrounded by sinful people like Kamsa. But I am going to get with my own eyes, I will see Krishna today, huh? he said. And then he also said uh, that, uh, what punya have I done huh? in the previous life that Krishna has allowed me to come to Vindavan? I don't know what good fortune brings me to this abode. Like that he was thinking. And then he thought, when I go to Vindavan, will Krishna recognize me? Or he will be upset with me that I am working with Kamsa, working with a sinful person like Kamsa. And then he thought very deeply and said, no, Krishna cannot misunderstand anybody. He is in the heart of everybody. He is Antaryami. He will never misunderstand me. I am sure when I go to Vindavan, Krishna Balram will stand up while milking the cows. They will call me, oh, Uncle Akrura. And my heart will become joyful seeing them calling me as an uncle. And Krishna and Balram will embrace me. And when they would embrace me, I will fall at their feet and cry tears of, uh, you know, repentance for all my sinful reactions I have accumulated all these lifetimes. And then all my sinful reactions will be washed away because of Krishna's touch. Like that he was, see, in this world there are two types of chariots, Manorath. One is material Manorath, spiritual Manorath. You know, Manorath means dreaming. Uh, like we say, daydreaming. Like there was one fellow, he who had a pot shop, you know, pots, you know, earthen pots. So he had many, many pots all stacked like this in his shop and he was sitting and thinking, I will sell all these pots and make a lot of money and I will marry the most beautiful woman in the town and I will become so rich that she will want to marry me. And then he said, she has to obey me. If she won't to obey, I will take a stick and beat her. So when he bet this way, that way, what happened? All the parts broke down. <laughs> they all broke, turned, you know, broke into pieces. Then he woke, woke up to see. This is daydreaming. <laughs> you are sitting in the day and dreaming. So many people actually in this world, they tend to dream a lot, much more than what is happening in their lives. Yeah. Whatever they cannot get, they keep dreaming about it. This is called the material dream. And spiritual dream is a wonderful dream. Like you see, Akurura is having a spiritual dream. He is thinking, I will go to Vrindavan, I will meet Krishna. I will fall at his feet. Krishna will embrace me. My sinful reactions will be finished. So, this is glorified in the scripture. There was one poor Brahman in South India in a place called Pratishthanapur. Huh? Pratishthanapur. Very poor Brahman. He didn't have any means to offer anything to Lord. One day he sat by the bank of a river and he was weeping. My dear Lord, I have desire to serve you but I have no means. I don't have vessels. I want golden vessels, silver vessels hmm, to offer you nice eatables. What can I do? So, he closed his eyes and started meditating in his mind and he started thinking about golden pots and silver pots and he cooked varieties of preparations. He filled them all up and then when he made a sweet rice, he put his finger to check whether it is hot or cold. It was terribly hot. So, his finger became blackish and he jumped up, opening his eyes. It was really blackish. So, seeing this, Lord Vishnu laughed in the Vaikuntha. When Lakshmi ji asked, oh, oh Lord, why are you laughing? You please share your joy with me. Then Lord told the story. Then Lakshmi said, Oh, you should definitely bring the Brahman to our abode. So please send a vehicle to bring him back. Immediately Vaikuntha airplane was sent and the Brahmana was brought back to the spiritual world. Why am I telling you this? He was having a spiritual dream. Who? This Pratishnanapur Brahman or even Akrura. These are all spiritual dreams. We call it as a uh, uh, Sampratnatvika, Dainabodhika, Lalasamayi, three types of prayers. Huh? 
Some Pratnatmika means you are offering a prayer to the Lord. Huh? And Daina Bodhika means you express your humility to the Lord. How fallen I am. You present yourself. Like, Amada Jeevan Sada Paperat Nahiko Punyera Lesha. That is Daina Bodhika. Huh? And, and, and uh, uh, third one is called as Lala Samayi Pratna. Lala Samayi means like we sing. Tulasi Krishna prayers in that song. Moraye abhilash vilas kunje diyo vas naya nehri vosada yugala rupara She is abhilasha expressing. So this abhilasha is where the spiritual dreams are thought of by the devotee. We should always think of our prospect. When will the day come in my life? When I will Return back home, back to Godhead. I will meet Krishna eye to eye. I will get to see Shrimit Radharani and the gopis and the gopas and the cows and the calves and the Yamuna river. Hmm. And when will I get an opportunity to personally serve Krishna? Like within one song, Narthamada Sakura is singing. Huh? He's saying, Shama Gauri Ange Devo Chandane Rodanda same way in this song, is expressing, when will the time come when I will take Chandan and apply on the dark and the fire forms of Krishna and Radharani's forehead, like that is offering a prayer. So, Akrura's dream became true. Because whatever you are thinking in your mind, what is building up in your mind, you that state you will attain sooner or later. Like you will see, like one boy came from the school back. He told his mother, Mom, it is 4 o'clock now. I am going to take some rest. But 5 o'clock I have to go to movie. Huh? Please wake me up. But the mother forgot to wake him up. He got up at 5.30. He jumped up. Now he, he wasn't sure whether he will get the ticket or not. But as soon as he got up, immediately he shouted at the mother, you, you didn't get me up. It's getting late. So he immediately ran to the movie now. Now why he ran to the movie? Because while going to sleep, he had intention to go to movie. Huh? So, when he got up, he went to movie. Similarly, you will see when we die in one lifetime, we die with certain intentions. And those intentions will take you ahead in the next life. Whatever thoughts accrued. So, therefore, it is said, you are where your mind is, it is said. If your mind is in Krishna's lotus feet, you are in Vrindavan. If our mind is elsewhere, uh, then we are in that elsewhere place only. Uh, so, Akrura was surrounded by bad association. In Mathura, bad people like Kamsa, Shishupal, there are some such kinds of people. But he was like a lotus, unaffected by bad association. Same thing with Bhishma Pitama. He was surrounded by Dushta Chatushtayam, four Dushtas. Huh? Duryodhan, Dushasan, Shakuni and Karna. He was surrounded by such people. But did he get spoiled, Bhishma? Even in the battlefield, he is meditating on Krishna's beautiful form. And he's exchanging love even in a battlefield with Krishna. You can see that. So those people are examples for people who are surrounded by bad company, but they didn't get spoiled. So all of you, you also have experience in the modern times. You have to live in the material world, which is surrounded by so many impurities, impure association. But we have to remain like Akrura or remain like Bhishma, huh? keeping ourselves pure. And therefore they could attain Krishna. So why do we come to this place like Vindavan Dham? Because we want to increase our spiritual strength. From this abode, there is a very powerful spiritual vibration emanating, which you can't see with your eyes. As the Dham is revealed to you more and more, one can experience the presence of not only Krishna, or Srimit Radharani, the Gopas, the Gopis, the cows, calves, all the pastimes are happening even now. But it is invisible to our eyes. Just like, like you don't see X-rays, or alpha rays, or beta rays, or gamma rays, you don't see them. Huh? They are invisible to your eyes, but you know they exist. Correct, no? In the same manner, the whole abode of Vindavan is manifest with all its finer details. The pastimes are happening at every moment. Huh? 
so and it will be just like for example the flute sound of krishna uh, cannot be heard unless balram plows our heart it is said so guru is balram <coughs> he will plow our heart purify our heart then only we can hear the flute sound of krishna so we have not yet become purified fully so we don't have access fully but as we get purified 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 the access is also more just like for example if this spectacles if it is very dusty then i can't see all of you then it is you know when you take a wet cloth and wipe it then when it is transparent then i can see so we need that prema prema chakshu premaanjana churita bhakti velochane na santa sadai bhagradaye shu bilokayanti yam shama sundaram achinda guna swarupam govindam adi purusham tamaham bhajami <coughs> same thing brahma says i am going to conclude my talk with one very quick short story and then we will proceed tomorrow uh, here right here in vrindavan there is one temple called banki bihari very famous temple very old temple very famous temple if you go to the temple it will be always thronged by thousands of people huh? very famous temple it is so the <clears throat> altar will be repeatedly closed and open huh? by the pujari because pujari says that earlier banki bihari had run away with some devotee huh? so they are very worried that nobody should attract the lord so badly that they will take away the lord from there so they keep closing and opening very frequently so one day as usual banki bihari temple was very crowded with lot of devotees so one very rich merchant entered the temple at that time one blind man a devotee was going out to the temple they both had hit each other unknowingly they both fell to the ground so the merchant became very angry the zamindar no? he looked at this blind man and said are you blind why are you coming and hitting me and the blind man said sorry sir i am actually blind he said still that anger didn't appease huh? he told him if you are blind what business you have in the temple why don't you just sit at home huh? you are coming to temple and hitting the people and making them fall and you are also falling like that he said so to that the blind man said sir i don't come to temple to see the lord because i can't see the lord with my eyes but i am coming to temple to give attendance to the lord huh? daily attendance hazar huh? daily i will come i will stand in front of him and i am very confident that if lord's glance falls on me i will be immensely benefited and then he said just like a mother in the kitchen there is one eye in the cooking and another eye is on the child you have seen that every mother keeps that so he said for a child the mother's glance is always needed for protection similarly i also feel that krishna's glance on me is for my Uh, purification and protection therefore i come to temple he said not only that when i come to temple sadhu mahatmas they speak some nice thing which falls in my ears and it keeps ringing in my ears all day some nice past time i heard i keep remembering their instructions and i am sure that will also purify me so when he spoke like this the zamindar felt ashamed he told him you are not blind i am actually blind he said huh? because you appear blind but you are internally awakened spiritually you are awakened i am externally having eyes but spiritually i am a dull dullard huh? i am a dull head so devotees this is the main point we have to become internally awakened to the truths that we learn in shil prabhupada's books and we have heard from a spiritual master and the knowledge which we have been accumulating uh, we should not mechanically read the books but we read the books with the intention to meet krishna uh, and also uh, gradually as we become more and more sincere when the eyes of sense gratification are replaced by eyes of prema love for the lord uh, so there is a avidya chakshu avidya avidya means what ignorance avidya chakshu jnana chakshu prema chakshu uh, like shukadev goswami had jnana chakshu and saubari muni had avidya chakshu so he fell down and haridas sagar had prema chakshu so we want to have a prema chakshu eyes of love tinged with salve of love so we we can see the dham um, the sweet abode of uh, vrindavan by the mercy of all the acharyas we will be able to properly see it in the right perspective so on this uh, beginning day 
Of course, it's not at the beginning day. Tomorrow is the beginning day. Today, many of you have arrived today early. So, only Gopinath Poo and the team of seniors, they told me to speak to all of you today. But tomorrow, many more devotees will arrive here. This is the first time our Hyderabad temple uh, devotees have organized such a big yatra. They told me they generally go for yatra with 150 or 300, 350 max. They go like that. This time, they have organized the yatra for 1200 devotees. Uh, which, which is really a miracle, not a very easy thing. And uh, the team of devotees, uh, we will be introducing them to you. The last day, they will come to the stage. You can see who they are. Um, just about five, six of them, they have worked very hard. Uh, fixing uh, accommodation places for you, arranging your prasadam, um, and planning for the buses to take you to different places in the morning. Because many of you have come for the first time. Uh, uh, you will see in the morning time, you will hear a lecture by Vishwaru Prabhu, probably around one and a half, two hours. Then he will take you to different places. Uh, you will go around and see things. You will come back for the lunch. And then after lunch, Prasad, the afternoon time, two to five, you have some time, two, three hours with you. What can you do in that time? You can try to identify those devotees in your life with whom you have a good opportunity to connect and grow in your spiritual life. No? You can meet them, make friendships with them. That's the best time for you, afternoon time, after Prasad, post Prasad. And then evening again, we have five to eight. Uh, we have uh, Kirtan, we have lecture, we have, we also have um, Damodar Arati at the end. We have eight, 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 fifteen. We want to actually wind up the day by eight, fifteen, latest, eight, eight, fifteen, because and then we then we will be able to rise early in the morning. And we are going to have Mangalarti also here. They made such a beautiful altar. Huh? We have Radha Madan Mohan, we have Shil Prabhupada, we have Radha Damodar. Yeah, I'm very amazed at their, at their uh, capacity to organize such a big yatra. Not a very easy thing. We will thank them with one loud Hari Bol for them. Hari Bol! as Radhana Swami Maharaj. He brings a yatra with 7,000 devotees. Yeah. Very huge thing organizes every year. But this year we could not have it. No? Because they told me that one year in advance you have to book all the halls and everything. Gaurang Prabhu said they couldn't do it. But next year definitely Karthik time, there will be big yatra next time. But still, we didn't uh, cancel the yatra and we are not sitting in Hyderabad. We have come here to the holy abode. Um, I am a very tiny dust in the lotus feet of His Holiness Radhana Swami. I cannot describe the pastimes, uh, you know, the way sweetly he describes. Huh? But uh, one, one of the good news for you, you only have to tolerate me in the evening, but morning you will get Vishwaru Prabhu, huh? who is a very mature and very senior devotee. You know, he came to Krishna consciousness in way back in 1986. And he has been with uh, Radhanath Maharaj personally from the very early days. And he lived in Vindavan also several years, probably five to ten years he lived in Vindavan. In those days, Chaupati Temple had one property here. For taking care of the property, he lived here. And then later on, he started bringing the Bhaktivedanta Hospital uh, doctors for the Barsana Eye Camp. So he became very close to Vajabasis in Barsana. So he himself has become like one of the covered men <laughs> of Vindavan, just like we say Dinabandhu Prabhu. <laughs> so he knows he is soaked in Rajabhava. Even I also want to come with all of you to join his uh, tour in the morning along with his lectures. For for me, he is like my elder god brother. He is most respectable for me also. And uh, because he was coming, I was also confident. If uh, if somebody tells me to take Yatra alone, I won't be able to. Because the morning, uh, all the different places, he knows very well, uh, very deeply. So that is our good fortune. We have... Uh, mm -hmm. So I was ready for a collaborative Yatra. So this kind of lecture is easy for me and to give from the scriptures. But he knows many places in and out in Vrindavan. So let us have a very nice time from tomorrow. My request to all of you, don't keep awake till 11 o'clock. Go to bed early, daily. Uh -huh. Sleep early and get up early. What is the time now? Today is a little late. We will leave you early tomorrow onwards. Okay? Shri Prabhupada ki. Bhakta Vinda ki. Vindavan Dham ki.
रसकंडलम गोकुलाग नमेश्वर सत्यारूप रसकंडलम गोकुले ब्रजमान
श्याम सुंदर की श्री श्री गौर की श्री प्रभुपाल की वृंदावन धाम की समावेत भक्त वृंद की कार्तिक मास व्रत की अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की कलयुग पावन हरिनाम संकीर्तन की गौरव प्रेमानंद हरि हरि ओम 